Basically, just don't make it personal. Climate change isn't your fault. It's the Coke brothers' fault. It's the Coke brothers' fault. Basically, just don't make it personal. It's the Coke brothers' fault. It's the Coke brothers' fault. human society must change, and if I want to see that change, then I, myself, must act to change it. 
For all of our loathing of capitalism, we are all too often completely unable to see how deeply we ourselves are affected from having lived our entire lives under capitalism. We are so emboldened by our realization that things could be better, so intoxicated by the dream of building a better world, that we overlook our own false consciousness and adherence to elements of bourgeois civil society which undermine our movements and prevent us from achieving our revolutionary ambitions. Activists must recognize the damage of internal racism, the politics which support it, and how to deal with it, and then act swiftly and forcefully, sometimes even ruthlessly. The truth is that most anti-racist white radicals cannot bring themselves to bring the needed cold-blooded efficiency and commitment to the task. They are lured away from their task by friendships with other white people in the group, their fear of being excluded or shunned, lack of commitment to the struggle, lack of consistent support of peoples of color, and compromising or selling out to their own deep-seated racism and political opportunism. Capitalist society stifles collectivism at every level. We are taught to distrust each other, compete with each other, and demean each other at every turn. In our schools, in our workplaces, and in the mass media which we consume every day of our lives, we are conditioned into a sort of mass solipsism. How many pissing contests have we witnessed on the left over who's read more theory, or who's done more practice, or who is and isn't qualified to be part of the revolution? How much time do we waste going on witch hunts to determine who counts as truly working class, or pitting one form of oppression against another instead of trying to grasp how they might intersect? How much of our so-called political discourse is really just thinly veiled consumer culture in which we bicker about individual personalities who in the grand scheme of things mean nothing and are all but irrelevant in wider society? It's easy to feel depressed and hopeless when we realize how flawed and inefficient we as revolutionists might be thanks to the deep impact which capitalism has had on all of us. When I look at all the unnecessary infighting and competition in leftist spaces, it can be overwhelming. We have such a long way to go. Vast fortune, billions upon billions of dollars have been expended to implant capitalist ideology deep in your psyche from the moment you were born up until this moment. If you think you're immune, if you think you have cast off the mental chain and freed yourself from the prison in your mind, you are almost certainly fooling yourself. Sure, the Western left is deeply flawed and broken, and we have a long way to go and a lot of growing up to do, but this just means that we have a tremendous amount of unrealized potential. If we do manage to erode the false consciousness within ourselves, to dissolve the individualistic and competitive mindsets which plague all of us, and to overcome our differences, to work towards common goals, just think of what we might be able to accomplish. Just as we have nothing to lose but our chains, we only really have one direction in which we can head, and that's up. As undeveloped as we are, we have so much potential for growth, and that gives me hope that we might be able to align our dreams with reality, dissolve that false consciousness, and find a path forward to victory. This is Not Compete. Thanks for watching.
every copy of the Communist Manifesto. You could ban everyone from reading Karl Marx. But if you just like work in a pub and have your eyes open, you can see that society is divided into different classes of people based on their relationship to owning stuff. And society is generally structured around satisfying the desires of the owner class rather than the working class. Even if you wouldn't use that language, the Marxism is already inside of you. Ignorance in, ignorance out. Ignorance in, ignorance out. Ignorance in, ignorance out. Hermeneutical means to do with interpreting. It comes from the ancient Greek word hermeneuticos, which translates into English as three of my previous girlfriends turned out to be lesbians and I still didn't realize I was trans. They say that people are afraid of what they don't understand. But what if some people don't want to understand? Ignorance in, ignorance out. 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 Ignorance in, ignorance in. I met this girl at my uni and I said, hey dude, and she said, I'm actually a woman, I'm a trans woman, and I said, what's that? And she told me and I was like, how might my life have been different if somebody had just told me when I was a kid. That's years of my life I've wasted in ignorance that I can never get back. And you, know, you can go mad thinking about that sort of thing. I made it in the end. You gotta play the hand you dealt. But I didn't know, and I didn't know that I needed to know. I was ignorant. Not long after I'd become radicalized, began delving into the all important capital T theory, I started passively looking the discourse. I very quickly realized that the things I thought defined the left were the very things that were the greatest points of contention. Long story short, I came to the realization that the left has never been united and never will be. And that's okay. The terms left wing and right wing came out of the seating arrangements in the French Estates General during the French Revolution. Those who sat on the left opposed the Anshan regime, supporting the Revolution, Republic, and secular society. Those who sat on the right supported tradition, religion, and the Ashan regime. For some folks, having socially progressive politics is enough for them to assign you the label left wing. For other folks, vague anti capitalism is a necessary prerequisite to distinguish themselves from the dreaded liberals. Surely, if we only see what we have in common, we'll be able to Voltron ourselves out of the hell of capitalism. But no. Instead, we have to get hung up on petty arguments, majoring over minors and making mountains out of molehills. I can't help but question where folks are getting this impression that the left has ever been or can ever be united. Beyond the very obvious theoretical split within Marxism and between Marxism and anarchism, we've also seen the consequences of blatant divisions bear out in reality, most famously with the Soviet Union's brutal crackdown on non-Bolshevik socialists especially anarchists, after the revolution, a pattern that will be replicated in other revolutions of the 20th century. You can honestly point to any movement or revolution under the banner of leftism and find a web of factions and groups that work with and against each other to advance their various distinct causes. People say things like, yeah, the left has its differences, but let's unite now to defeat and then we can argue about the next step afterwards. But this is not a game. Capitalism is not the final boss. 
Unity is not some superficial declaration. Revolution is not a single, simple, linear event set into the distant future. I'm also not saying never build bridges or never work with people who don't have the exact politics. My vision is of a world in which many worlds exist. So I work with people I disagree with, but I also know my limits. I know the extent to which we can effectively work together and we maintain those parameters and we still learn from each other. My focus is mainly on sharing my perspective and my principles, on actively organizing my people in every way I know how, with my values at the forefront, and on building coalitions locally, regionally, and internationally based on the same in order to develop resilience, autonomy, safety, and care. As the climate collapse descends upon us all, I don't have time to waste on canvassing for politicians who do not care about me. I don't have time to convince people to join some vanguard party. I don't have time to put up with so-called radicals who are comfortable ignoring the real struggle of those under their favorite states. I don't have time to wait around for some imaginary global capital R revolution like it's the rapture. Time and energy are limited. Why spend them trying to fit together pieces from completely different puzzles? Revolution is now. Peace. What is America to conservatives? Rather than defining America as the land, the people, the culture, or the state, conservatives in this country often define America as exclusively the values of their own ideology. That way, everyone to their left can be labeled an outgroup that hates America or is un-American. Conservatives believe in a natural meritocracy and natural hierarchy. The property rights and low taxes are related to the hierarchy of capitalism. The elevation of the majority or dominant people and disinterest in helping the minorities or subordinate people are related to Christian supremacy, white supremacy, patriarchy, and other social hierarchies. Finally, empowering the police enforces these hierarchies domestically and empowering the military enforces American supremacy abroad. To a conservative, the playing field is neutral, and success and status are determined by hard work, meritocracy. However, these beliefs conflict with reality. Those born into poverty are significantly more likely to remain that way than those born into better circumstances. These hierarchies do not flow naturally, they sustain themselves by keeping those at the top where they are. This is how conservatives dismiss accusations of sexism, racism, and other forms of bigotry. To conservatives, nobody is being held down or disadvantaged. Everybody gets what they deserve. This is the order of things, and for many conservatives, this order is not simply natural, but is ordained supernaturally by their god. Furthermore, this belief in meritocracy not only justifies hierarchy within America, but justifies a hierarchy of nation-states. To conservatives, America is allowed to control the world through its foreign policy because it has earned that right through its military strength and economy. Conservatives perceive America as American values, but they define American values the same way that they define conservative values. To conservatives, America is their values, and opposition to their conservative values is un-American, treasonous and morally wrong. When conservatives say, you hate America, it doesn't have anything to do with the United States of America. It's a value judgment about you not adhering to their conservative values.
Conservatives often use the term real America to refer to themselves, the implication being that anyone to their left is un-American or a fake American. When confronted with a problem with America, the response from conservatives is obfuscation and accusation all in one term. You hate America. Are you protesting racial inequality and police brutality? Is this something America should confront and reckon with? No, you just hate America. Are you marching to bring attention to climate change? Is this important to you and your children's future? No, you just hate America. Do you want to make sure students know about the civil rights movement? No, you just hate America. Tax the rich? Hate America. Raise the minimum wage? Hate America. An accusation of this magnitude is always going to appear more sensational and captivating than the actual issue, which will move audience attention to the accusation instead of the issue. Frankly, even if the accused person genuinely did hate America, that would not immediately invalidate their unrelated point. I hope this has been helpful in understanding where this talking point comes from, what this talking point really means, and that the next time a conservative says, you hate America, their intentions will be more transparent.
someone out there is afraid to lose you. And if you want to be part of something bigger, join the rest of us here in the real world. It's the biggest thing there is. and saw the world. 